What's up and welcome to the Sam Dracula channel, a Charlotte Hornets fan channel. It's been a rough year, but we got some news. All right, Steve Clifford stepping down as head coach of the Hornets at the end of the season. Let's look at the Twitter. Okay, from Woj, 10 minutes ago, as I'm recording this, Steve Clifford is stepping down as the Charlotte Hornets coach at the end of the season and working to finalize a front office role with the franchise. Clifford informed his assistants and players on Wednesday morning. Woj goes on to say that, you know, the new Mitch Kupchak, Jeff Peterson, and the new owners were open to bringing him back as coach, which I don't believe for a second. Uh, but he decided, Clifford being, decided that he didn't want to commit to next year's grind of head coaching for the 24-25 season. I believe that. I do believe he didn't want to do this again. Because <laughs> another year, uh, uh, more on that later, more on that later. Woj continues, this allows the Hornets to start a search immediately for the organization's next coach, right? We saw it play out. New owners come in, we see the new front office take shape, and the next step is to bring in new coaching staff. Woj drops these names. Sacramento's Jordy Fernandez, Boston's Charles Lee, Miami's Chris Quinn, Phoenix's Kevin Young, and my favorite, others. Hope that includes Mike Boonholzer. I want to focus on this piece right here, first off, okay? Let's go back to last season. Or excuse me, two seasons ago, right? Hornets fire Borrego, specifically Cupcheck and MJ, that organization. They fire Borrego, and they rehire Steve Clifford after firing him in 2018, okay? After not interviewing him the first time around when they tried to hire uh, Mike D'Antoni and Kenny Atkinson, Right? Those deals fell apart. Atkinson said yes, then he said no, and then we were left with no head coach, and they brought back uh, they brought back Clifford on a two year deal with a team option for the third year, which coincidentally is next season. He fulfilled two of those years with terrible results. Not all his fault, by the way, but when you look at the results on the court, pretty. Gross. So with, with all that being said, I think Steve Clifford is an incredible basketball mind, right? He was a consultant with the Nets before he rejoined this franchise. And I think it's I think he'd be a valuable person to, to keep in the fold. I love personally, I love hearing him talk basketball. I'm I'm glad that they're looking for another thing for him within the organization. Cause I think it's the more people like that, the better to have around. Yeah. And especially considering he knows these guys, too. He knows these players. He knows what they're good at, what they're not good at, for instance, like intimately. Right. Uh, he's been yelling at Nick Rich has set screens properly for two years. You know what I'm saying? Still hasn't happened. Still not happening. So he can contribute in a different way. Right. In a different role within the organization, which I think is a very good thing. Right. It's a, it's a good piece to have uh, to the puzzle. And this kind of new ran new set, new, uh, new, new, this new functioning Hornet situation that's going on here. And so largely going back to the start of the year since January, these new owners, I think, have properly been cooking right from the arena stuff to the practice facility stuff. Excellent work. Right. Moving on from Cupcheck, moving on from Clifford. Right. Moving on from Rozier, moving on from PJ, moving on from Gordon. Right. Sets the, I think sets this franchise up to move in a proper direction, like a real respectable direction that won't have me embarrassed or ashamed or jealous of other franchises' success, right? I think us Hornets fans have a little bit of that why not us mentality when you see teams like Sacramento finally getting their act together or Orlando, right, flying right past us in the, in the overall power rankings in the NBA. You know, there, there's hope out there for the smaller market teams. They're finding success. It's about time the Hornets find success. And I think moving on from... Cupcheck, I'm well, sorry, moving on from MJ, moving on from Cupcheck, and moving on from Clifford is, a, is our three steps in the positive direction overall. I've been saying this since he got fired, right? But Mike Boonholzer is the guy I want, right? Not only does he have the resume, but he also has an ability to build a coaching staff, right? His coaching tree is legit, and the Hornets just can't only replace the head coach. They have to redo or enhance the entire staff. Right, bringing another head coach and not changing anything else, I think will result in the same outcomes again. It's just half measures after half measures. And I have faith in Rick and Gabe, the new owners, to do this properly. Right. And I think bringing a guy like Mike Boonholzer, 
you'll probably be very expensive, right? <laughs> like you know, how the Pistons had to overpay Monty Williams. It may be a very similar situation, especially considering Mike uh, that, that Boonholzer has won a, a won a ring. I'm glad the Hornets are going to do their due diligence the rest of the season, interviewing these young up and coming assistant coaches. But if they go the proven route, my Boonholzer should be at top at the top of the list. Okay. Not only does he have the on court success, like I mentioned before, but this is the coaching tree I was talking about. Okay. Uh, we're talking Quinn Snyder, right? Kenny Atkinson. We're talking uh, Taylor Jenkins and Darvin Ham. Like you could draw a straight line between these guys being on coach Bud's staff and having success elsewhere. And I don't see that happening with any of the systems we currently have. You know what I mean? Like, I would love to support a team that other teams are trying to hire their assistants all the time. I don't see that happening anytime soon. So a total, like, focus on improving the on-court product and the coaching staff in general is overdue. And I think we're seeing the path where you have new owners, new front office, new coach, and then new coaching staff is the, is the next step. I think in this in this process that we're going on, and as a Hornets fan, despite the on court results, has me positive, has me excited. You know what I mean? Like wa watching this team play sucks at times. More often than not, it's pretty brutal. And honestly, there've been some results that have been fireable offenses, in my opinion. Right, losing to Detroit three, t getting swept by Detroit, but three losses to Detroit is terrible. Right, that Milwaukee game where we couldn't score thirty points and a half, that's a fireable offense. There's been a lot of those performances this season. A lot of stuff we thought were worked on or fixed. And you can want to point on the players. You can point at the coaching staff. Something had to change. The easiest change to make is the coach. And with his team option, they don't really owe him any money next year unless, you know, he takes that uh, all their job within the organization, which, again, I think is a good thing. I don't know when my next live stream will be. You know, watching these games on stream are pretty brutal. So, Stay tuned. Make sure, make sure you subscribe, like, and all that stuff to stay tuned for the next stream if and whenever it happens. But, uh, hey, it's good news. In a bad year, we're seeing some changes happen here in Charlotte for the better, hopefully. I don't know. Hopefully. You know what I mean, the new hire could be worse. You never know. But at least it's something different. Anyway, I've been Sam. You've been great. Peace.